Today, Dr. Zoon is stuck on something new, magnets. You'll learn all about the scientific principles behind magnets. Then, it's time to build as you put all that knowledge into practice and complete the Pitsco Levitator Kit. Hello, kids. Today, we're going to look at vehicles in a state of flux, magnetic flux, that is. We're going to build a maglev vehicle. Maglev stands for magnetic levitation. Magnetic levitation can be defined as the use of magnetism to levitate or hold up an object. If you have ever had a chance to experiment with magnets, you know that they can be attractive or repulsive, dependent upon the orientation of the poles of the magnets. The pole of a magnet is the end of the magnet that is attracted to the north or south pole of the Earth. If two opposite poles, north and south, are close together, they will attract each other. If two like poles, north and north, or south and south, are close together, they will repel each other. As you can see, the magnets react long before the magnets even get close to each other. This is because the magnets put out magnetic lines of force called flux. Using iron filings, we can see the magnetic lines of flux around this magnet. These lines of filings indicate where the magnetic fields are located. You can see that the lines of flux extend out from the magnet in different directions. Let's look at the magnetic fields around two magnets whose opposite poles are close together using iron filings. We can see that there are strong magnetic lines of flux between the two magnets. Let's turn one of the magnets around so that now we have like poles together. When we add iron filings to this, it shows very few lines of flux between the magnets. The magnetic lines are pushing on each other and repelling the magnetic lines of flux. If we harness the magnetic force of magnets, we can use the force to hold an object up or levitate it. Let's see if we can get this magnet to hold another magnet up. I can feel that there is a force pushing up on this magnet, and the force gets stronger as the magnets get closer together. However, I can also feel that the top magnet is trying to slip away from one side to another. If I release the magnet, it won't levitate. It just slips to one side of the magnetic field and gravity takes over. This device, called the ROMP, illustrates the forces of magnetic slippage. It has a magnet suspended above a base which has several movable magnets. Depending on where the magnets are placed, the suspended magnet is pushed and pulled around by the magnetic fields of the base magnets. It appears that magnetism can be a slippery subject. This slippage of magnetic fields is one of the challenges that must be overcome when working with magnetic levitation devices. If you have a couple magnets available, see if you can get one to magnetically levitate the other. Let's take a look at some simple levitation devices. This device is called the Revolution. It consists of a base and a rotor, both of which contain magnets. We can place the rotor into the base, and it is supported by the magnetic fields of the magnets in the base. Having the rotor angled down slightly controls magnetic slippage within this device. This allows the force of gravity to always pull the rotor toward the glass plate. The rotor has a pinpoint on its end, allowing the rotor to spin freely like this. Now let's make a simple magnetic levitation device using the magnets found in the levitator kit we will put together later. First, we will label the faces of the magnets with north and south to indicate the orientation of the magnetic fields of the magnets. Kids, you will need to be careful with these magnets as they are ceramic magnets and can break if they snap together too violently. 
To determine the north and south poles of the magnets, let's tie a string onto one of the magnets and suspend it. Due to the fact that the Earth is a giant magnet, the magnet will align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. Rotate the magnet and watch. It will always return to the same orientation. The side of the magnet that is facing north is considered to be the north pole of the magnet. Let's take a marker and put an N for north on that face of the magnet and a S for south on the other face of the magnet. Let's take the string off this magnet and carefully stack the rest of the magnets under it like this. In this position, they are all the same orientation, so we will mark their faces with a marker so we can see how the orientation affects their performance. Mark an N on the top face of each magnet. Now turn the stack of magnets over and make a S mark on the face of each magnet like this. We will use a 3 16 brass tube, or you could use a dowel rod, and hold it vertically while we place one of the magnets on the tube with an N mark up. We will take another magnet and place it carefully on the tube with the N side down. The two magnets are kept apart like this because we have two north poles pushing against each other. Gravity is pulling down on both magnets, but the bottom magnet is magnetically levitating the top magnet. Let's add another magnet to the tube and see what happens. This time, let's put the magnet with the N mark up, just like the first magnet. Look at that! Now both magnets are being levitated. Let's take the last magnet off and put it on the opposite way just to see what happens. The two top magnets are stuck together, but are still being levitated by the bottom magnet. Let's flip that top magnet over again with the end mark up and add one more magnet with the end mark down. Look at that, quadroflux magnetic levitation. In all these varieties of magnetic levitation with magnets on the tube, how do you think that magnetic slippage is being controlled? Essentially, the magnets can only move up and down on the tube because the tube limits their sideways movement. You can experiment with more magnets and with different orientations to discover other properties of magnetic levitation. Kids, I think you're beginning to see how magnetic levitation works. So let's see if we can build a magnetic levitation vehicle, one that is held up by magnetic force, but is able to move in a specific direction. We will be assembling the Pitsco Levitator Kit, designed for use on the Pitsco Maglev track. The components of this kit are four ceramic magnets, a levitator car template, and four pieces of cardstock material. The two narrower pieces of cardstock are for use with the first version of the Pitsco Maglev track. Its rails were about two inches apart. However, we are going to be using the newest edition of the track, which has rails about two and a half inches apart, so we will use the wider pieces of cardstock. To assemble our Maglev vehicle, we will need to also have double-sided tape, transparent tape, and scissors. The first step in making our maglev vehicle is to determine the orientation of our magnets in relation to the magnets on the maglev track. Let's take one of our magnets that we marked and place it over one of the magnetic strips on the maglev track. In one orientation, the magnets will repel each other, and in the other orientation, they will be attracted to each other. With this track, the magnets attract the North Pole, so the faces of the track magnets are South Poles. If the magnets on your maglev track are oriented with the North Poles up, you will have to reverse the orientation of the faces of the magnets in the next steps when assembling your vehicle. To get the magnets for our vehicle to repel the magnets on the track, 
we will need to have them with the south pole, or S, face down. Using a small piece of double stick tape, we will attach one of the magnets to one of the corners of a piece of cardstock. The long direction of the magnet should correspond with the long side of the cardstock, like this. Be sure to attach the magnet about one millimeter, or one sixteenth of an inch, in from the corner in each direction. We will place the other three magnets on the other three corners. With each magnet, the end face of the magnet will be taped to the cardstock, leaving the S face of the magnet showing. Each magnet will be oriented with the long side of the magnet corresponding to the long side of the cardstock. Also, each magnet will be positioned about one millimeter in from the corner. With all four magnets attached, check to be sure they all have the S face of the magnet showing. Place the cardstock vehicle on the track. It should levitate above the track magnets. If it doesn't, check to make sure all the magnets are oriented the same direction and that they are repelling the track magnets. We will finish our maglev kit by making our levitator car body. Use the back of the scissors to score along the solid red lines on the levitator template. Use scissors to cut out the three pieces of the levitator car along the red dotted lines. Fold the main body along the red center line and use your scissors to cut slots for the wings along the red dotted lines. Fold the white flaps at the red solid lines inward like this. Use cellophane tape and tape the nose of the car together Use double stick tape on the bottom of the white flaps to attach the car to the piece of cardstock with the magnets attached. Be sure the levitator body does not extend beyond the sides of the cardstock, otherwise the vehicle will not fit in the track. Insert the wings into the two slots and our maglev vehicle is ready to roll. Well, not really roll, but levitate down the track. Let's put a block of wood under one end of this track and we will let gravity provide the force to move our maglev vehicle down the track. Here goes. It worked. Our levitator car floated down the track with ease. Once you have your vehicle working, you can experiment with it by adding mass to it and seeing what effect more mass has. Or you can add a motor and a propeller and see how fast it could go down the track. You can even try to design a sail for your vehicle and use a fan to provide wind for the sail. Kids, I hope this has been an attractive activity for you. Until next time, this is Dr. Zoon saying, see you real soon.